Hello and welcome to A-Level Biology with Miss Estrick. In this video, we're going to be looking at required practical 10, which is looking at invertebrates moving within a maze in response to light and dark. If you are new here, then click subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the latest videos. So required practical 10 for AQA A-Level is this one here, the investigation into the effect of an environmental variable on the movement of an animal using either a choice chamber or a maze. Now I've already done a video on the choice chamber, which I'll link up here, so you can go and have a look at that one if you want. This video is just focusing on the method using a maze. Now the theory that this links to is topic six, taxis and kinesis. So you need to have an understanding of this to be able to come up with your hypothesis and explain any of your results. And if you haven't covered this yet, or if you need a recap, I've got a taxis and kinesis video, which again is linked at the top here. So in brief, taxis and kinesis are simple responses, and they are there to keep organisms within their favourable conditions. So for example, it could be a woodlouse that needs to stay within the dark area so that they don't dry out. It could also be that they need to stay in the dark to avoid predators. It's a very simple response and taxis just means the organism moves its entire body towards the favourable stimulus, or it could be moving away from an unfavourable stimulus. Kinesis is when the organism changes the speed of movement and the rate that it moves direction. So that's the theory that this practical is based on. Now I'm going to be going through the aim, hypothesis, equipment, method, risk assessment, ethics, results, analysis and conclusion so that you'd be able to write up a full lab report. And I'm going to put the time codes at the bottom so you can jump through to go to the bits that are relevant for you or if you need to know the whole thing then just stick on and you can see the entire lab report. So the hypothesis and aim to begin with. We're aiming to investigate um, the turning behaviour in invertebrates, and you may be using maggots or wood lice as the two most common um, invertebrates that are used within schools. And in this one, we're going to be looking at their behaviour in response to light and dark conditions. So that is the aim. The hypothesis is what I'm going to predict will happen. Now, I'm going to predict that if we put the wood lice here one at a time at the start point, most of them will take the route that goes towards the dark side. That's because dark is more favourable, because they're less likely to dry out, and they're more hidden from predators. So that's my aim and hypothesis. The next step then is looking at the equipment. So you need to create the maze, and this image is taken straight from AQA's required practical handbook. So you can um, find that on their website, and that gives you a pattern to cut out and use a particular maze. You'll therefore need scissors and glue to create the maze. You need the invertebrates that you're going to use. Um, cotton wool, this is so you can clean the maze in between each trial. Black paper and sellotape to make one side dark. So the method then, step one, create your maze. Then on the dark side, you um, will need to add some black paper so that it is blocking out the light. Step two, now this particular maze can be used for other experiments as well. For the one that we're doing here, just going light or dark side, um, we just need to start here and therefore you need to insert the block at this point so this section of the maze isn't in use. Alternatively, if you are just going to do this method, then you can create a maze that doesn't have that section. So that's now the maze all set up. Now we're ready to do the experiment. So use a teaspoon to carefully add one of your invertebrates into the start point. Then observe and record which side they move to. So do they move along and go to the light or the dark side? Then remove that invertebrate, wipe the maze clean. And the reason you need to do that is they'll leave slight traces of chemicals where they have moved and then future invertebrates that are placed within it can detect that and that will influence their decision. So we just want to make sure it's only the light or dark variable that is having any impact on their decision. You then repeat steps four to six at least nine times with nine different invertebrates so you have enough results to be able to calculate a statistic. And if you do have any invertebrates, when you put them in at the start position, they just don't move, 
Then take them out, wipe the maze with the cotton wool and add a different invertebrate. So that's our method. Now you do also have to set up a control experiment. And the point of a control experiment is to show that any differences that you see are just due to the independent variable. So in this case, to be able to prove that it is just the dark and light that is causing any differences that we see, we'll use the same maze, put the block in, but this time both sides are uncovered. So there is not a dark option. And then after that, the method is exactly the same as it was before. And we would expect that we'll have an equal number of invertebrates going to the left and the right side because the conditions are the same. And this then proves that it is just the light and the dark that is causing any differences that we might see in the test maze. So risk assessment and ethics. The key risk assessment is the fact that we're working with invertebrates. They may have pathogens on them that could cause infection. So that is one of the reasons why we're using the teaspoon to transfer them rather than just picking them up with your hands. And you do need to make sure you wash your hands after the practical. Ethics. Now, whenever you are working with live animals, you have to make sure you are not causing any permanent damage. That is your aim in terms of working ethically with a live animal. And that's another reason we're using the teaspoon, because when you pick them up, you might cause some damage and you can potentially be more careful with a teaspoon. So the results then, when I've done this experiment, here are my results for the control and for the test maze. And as I said, the control maze we would have expected to have had exactly half and half. Um, so I used 10 maggots, so I would have expected five in the left, five in the right, didn't quite get that. In my test maze, eight went into the dark and two went into the light. So none of these results were exactly what I expected, because I expected all would go to the dark and I'd have 50-50 left and right in my control. However, it might still be a significant difference, but the only way I can conclude that a significantly more went to the dark side is by doing the chi-squared statistic. So that will be part of your analysis. You'll need to calculate the chi-squared statistic. And if you're not sure how to do that, I'll just link up the top here, and then you can have a look at how to use the chi-squared statistic. Once you've then calculated your chi-squared statistic, you can use that to come to a conclusion. And if your statistic shows that there is less than 5% probability that the difference in the number of maggots that went to the dark side compared to the light is due to chance, then we can conclude that the light did cause a significant difference in distribution. So you will perhaps need to look over statistics just to make sure you're clear on that. So at the end of this video, I'll link my maths skills playlist and you can have a look at all the statistics there. So that is the results. The final thing you might get is some exam questions linked to this practical. So I've just picked out four which quite commonly have come up linked to this practical. So the first one, suggest a null hypothesis. Now, null would be that you state you don't get the pattern that you're expecting. So in this case, there will be no difference in the number of invertebrates that turn to the light or the dark side of the maze. And whenever you're asked to write a null hypothesis, you have to state both the independent and dependent variable within your null hypothesis. So for mine here, the independent variable is the light and the dark side. That's why I deliberately changed. The dependent variable is what you're measuring, and that is the number of invertebrates which are going to either side. Next question then we've got is, what is the purpose of the control maze? Now a control experiment is always to show that any differences that you see are due to the independent variable. So in this case, it's to show that any differences in the directions that the invertebrates move is just due to the light and the dark conditions. You could be asked, why do you have to wipe the maze clean with cotton wool in between each trial? And this is, as I was saying, because wood lice, maggots, whichever invertebrates, can leave a trail of chemicals and debris where they've moved. And that can be detected by the future invertebrates, and that could influence their choice. And therefore, you don't know if your results that you get are due to the light and the dark or due to the previous tracks of invertebrates. 
Finally, why is it important to repeat with at least 10 maggots? And this is so that you have enough data to calculate a mean and more importantly, a statistic. And you need to be able to calculate a statistic so you can say whether the difference you saw is significant or not, um, or whether it was just due to chance. So that is it for required practical 10. I hope you have found it helpful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. You can see other videos linked to this. And if you do have any questions, send them on the comments section or head over to any of my social media accounts and chat with me there.